Ave Maria. At that time, the disciples came to Jesus, saying, Who then is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven? And Jesus called a little child to him, set him in their midst, and said, Amen, I say to you, unless you turn and become like little children, you will not enter the kingdom of heaven. Whoever, therefore, humbles himself as this little child, he is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven. And whoever receives one such little child, for my sake, receives me. Today is, we celebrate the Feast of St. John Baptist de La Salle, born in the 16... In the uh, 1600s, 1651, he was of wealthy family, noble family, hence his name, De La Salle. And he was the eldest of ten children. The 1600s was a difficult time for the church, the, in, especially in France. The wars of religion were being fought the country itself was um, under a great deal of internal stress and division, essentially because the Protestants, um, those who had left the church, were very wealthy and very powerful, consequently. The church herself was much weakened because of the... um, the, the, the divisions that were were being fought, and it, it is in this in this time that the Lord raised up some great saints, and Saint John Baptist, whom we feast we celebrate today, was one of them. At the age of about twenty, he he had been raised by his grandmother on the lives of the saints, aspired to the priesthood, and so he entered the seminary. But two years later, his parents died, and so he had to return to support his younger brothers and sisters. That done, he re-entered the seminary and was ordained at the age of about 30. He, because of his um, background, his wealth, his family connections, and so on, he was given a canonry in Paris which meant that he had status and he had clout. And so the reading, that the first reading is particularly relevant because, as we heard, happy the man who is found without fault, who turns not aside after gain, nor puts his trust in money nor treasures. Who is he that we may praise him? For he has done wonders in his life. He has been tested by gold and has come off safe. And this remains his glory forever. He could have sinned, but did not. So his possessions are secure in the Lord. At that time, the it was it, the, the priests expected to have advancement. If you had a canary, it was next you climb up the the ladder, and eventually become a bishop, and then you don't really care about the flock. That was a sad state of affairs. But he didn't do this. He saw the poor, and he saw Christ in them, and he felt an obligation to do something about it. And so, encouraged by Father Roland, he set himself personally to teach the children in in the streets. And he started the classroom effectively, the classroom as we know it today. Not one child only being taught by a private tutor, but a group of children. And what is more important, he did it for free. And so he would go around begging for assistance. And it wasn't money that he required, but he wanted men and women who would give their time to teach these children for free. Now, once you do that, you know the kind of characters you will attract. And so the first teachers he had were somewhat ill-mannered, to put it in the charitably. And so he had to train them as well to see the children as 
the little ones of Christ, as children of, of, of that the Lord spoke about, who will inherit the kingdom of heaven. What was the consequence? Well, success initially, and with it came envy. And so there were the detractors who were accusing him of all kinds of crimes. And the result was that people became suspicious and, and of, of his intentions. After all, who gives education for free? That was basically the question that was being asked. And so the, even the teachers whom he had with him, they gradually withdrew. And so there were only three left, and they took a vow. Um, and in this way, they formed themselves into a congregation. And the vow was that they would persevere, no matter what it cost them personally. Even if they were reduced to eating bread and water, they would continue. And after enjoying that, literally for a number of years, their work was blessed. But St. John did something else. He also took uh, under his care criminals who had um, been released from prison. And of course, nobody wanted to employ them. So he took them as well, and he was teaching them, giving them another opportunity to, to survive. And by the time he died at the age, he was, he was just short of 70 years. Um, he died about 1719 or so. Um, he, his little congregation had already grown, and the school system was established. Curiously, the Protestants adopted it and ran it far more efficiently than we did. But nonetheless, the system was established. Because his, his purpose was not so much to give um, uh, the, the, what we would call academic education to, to the children, but above all, a moral formation. Because without a moral formation, it's impossible for us to please God. And so the moral aspect of his work was what was really important. And also, of course, the, the practical skills he gave them, the literacy that they possess and, and numeracy, that would also benefit them as well. And so he effectively changed um, the, uh, the education system. In fact, he established an education system uh, as we now have it. But his motivating... Um, force was in fact love of Christ and as we heard in the gospel the the Lord called his disciples and he asked them a question who is the greatest in the kingdom of heaven he asked the question because his apostles they're on the way to Jerusalem they're thinking about the kingdom that's going to be established the apostles were annoyed, envious, because our Lord had did, did something prior to that. He had shown special favor to Simon Peter. Not, can, not only did he give, entrust to him the keys of the kingdom, authority in the church, but then when the tax collectors came and said, to Peter, <clears throat> doesn't your master pay the tax? Peter said, yes, of course he does, and went into the house where the Lord corrected him. And he said, go into the lake, cast uh, 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 a hook, you will catch a fish, open his mouth, and there will be a coin. Go and pay the tax for the two of us. And this incident was a source of envy for the others because of the symbolism and, of course, the meaning behind the one coin being paid for both the Lord and, and, and Peter for the tax. And so they, they were disputing among themselves, you know, who's really great? Because each one of them had gifts and talents, as indeed all of us do. But not all the gifts and talents are equal. And so they were dependent on merit, after all, I'm more important than you. Well, why? Because I feel I'm more important. That leads us to two things. Because pride is either an, is an excessive love of oneself or a love of one's excellence. Now, humility is the con converse. 
Humility is essentially a recognition that one is not worthy and also that whatever one has is essentially a gift. And so our Lord is presenting this. He says the kingdom of heaven is not given on natural gifts, talents, abilities. No, but rather on one's internal disposition, how one really uses those gifts and the intention for which one uses the gifts. In the case of St. John, he, he was using his gifts, not only his personal wealth, not only his personal influence, he was using all of his being to benefit others. And in all of this, he did not see himself as being worthy. He, he regarded himself simply as a servant, doing nothing more than what the Lord himself would have done. And so when the Lord asks, answers the question, he does it in two, two ways. One, he gives an example. He calls a little child and says, unless you become like little children, you will never enter the kingdom of heaven. So then we look at the child and decide, well, what is it about the child that um, is necessary for us to enter the kingdom? And of course, it's the innocence and the, the lack of malice. For even when children misbehave, they do not do so out of malice. But it's the, this is what really is, is critical um, to, to, to the example that the Lord gives. And often you'll find that the proud are also malicious. That is, that they will not um, take lightly any personal offense given to them. They will, in fact, seek for an opportunity for revenge. But the humble person receives a rebuke and thinks himself deserving of it, and in fact will look for ways in which he can improve himself. He's open, in other words, to, to correction, as indeed little children are. And so we thank the Lord for having given us so great a saint as, as John Baptist, knowing that in his example, we have uh, models for how indeed to, to deal not only with little children, but indeed with the little ones of Christ, that is, the humble of the earth. In the name of the Father, the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Santa Maria.